Hello everyone, I am Ravi Chand. Welcome to the presentation on Financial Thumb Rules. In this presentation, I am going to talk about 10 thumb rules in the areas of investing and personal finance. This will help you to take financial decisions correctly, confidently and quickly. Henry Ford once famously said, thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason why so few engage in it. For a common man like you and me, to think and to take decision sometimes becomes a very difficult activity, especially if we are to take financial decisions. For example, questions like how much wealthy should I be? How much should I save for my retirement? How big a house can I afford to? These questions really trouble a common man. To find answers to such questions are never easy and it may also involve a long, difficult and effort intensive process. Not just that, there may be too many variables to consider. For example, how much should be my retirement corpus? The answer depends on multiple things, your lifestyle, your monthly expenses, your spending habits, the interest rate, inflation, etc. So what do we do? The answer, thumb rules or rules of the thumb. Thumb rules are principles or solutions that are easy to remember, simple to use. They help you get quick answers or rough estimates that are precisely the approximately right. Not precise, but approximately right. Thumb rules are available for even the complex problems which are impacted by multiple variables. In short, thumb rules help you to think quickly on your feet and make those back of the envelope calculations. There are thumb rules in every field. In this presentation, we will focus on few important ones on investing and personal finance. Let's get started. First up, we will tackle the million dollar question every individual has at some point in their life, especially the salary class. How much money should I save for my retirement? The answer, Retirement Corpus Rule. The Retirement Corpus Rule helps you to find out how much corpus you need to accumulate based on your expected annual expenses. Your corpus is equal to your estimated annual expenses. You multiply that with 25. If you want to be on the conservative side, you can multiply it by 30. I put an example here for a gentleman called Sunny, who has a uh, monthly expense of 25,000. The annual expenses comes to 300,000. Hence, the retirement corpus would be 300,000 into 25, 75 lakhs or 7.5 million. So this is a quick thumb rule which helps you in a minute to calculate what should be your retirement corpus. Moving on. Next up is another common question we think a lot about. How wealthy should I be? The answer, the expected net worth rule helps you to find out how wealthy you should be based on the simple formula. You multiply gross annual income with age and arrive at 10% of the amount. So 10% into age into gross annual income should give you roughly your expected net worth. Put that in example here. So for a 40 year old Sunny with an annual income of 25 lakhs or 2.5 million, his expected net worth will be 10% of 40 into 25 lakhs or 1 crore or 10 million. 
So quickly you can find out your expected net worth. Next. This one is on stock markets. The markets go up and down and many times we wonder how much money should I put in stocks? 50%, 100%, 20%. What is the right allocation? The answer, 100 minus age rule. This rule helps you decide the allocation percentage with a simple formula. 100 minus your age would be your approximate appropriate percentage in equities. So for a 40 year old man, the suggested percentage for equities would be 100 minus 40, 60%. 60% can be in stocks and the remaining can be in other asset classes. Next up, this is a very important and useful rule to remember. Many times we are offered, let me double your money in five years. Let me money, triple your money in eight years. So somebody gives you an offer like this. How, how do you decide on what is the rate of return you are, you are getting from this investment offer? The answer, rule of 72. The rule of 72 will help you calculate the number of years it takes to double your investment given your expected rate of return. So you just divide 72 by the rate of return, you will arrive at the number of years it takes to double. You could do this for tripling or for four times. The numerator will change to 114 and 144 for tripling and quadrupling into an example the rule of 72 so Sunny gets six percent interest on his bank deposit 72 divided by six so it takes 12 years to double his money in the bank let's do a reverse calculation if somebody promises Sunny to double his money in six years what would be the return offered by them. So you could do both ways. 72 by 6, so 12% is the return they are being offered. So this is a very useful rule to remember. Just substitute 114 and 144 if you want to find out for tripling and four times. Okay, the next set of rules, there are a set of few tab rules are related to an important topic of personal finance loans. Many times we want to know whether we can afford that big house, that swanky fast car or are we stretching our budget? Is it within our budget, within our financial ability and capability? If you have to take such decisions, the answer 20% down payment rule. So this 20% down payment rule will help you decide the maximum quantum of loan a prudent individual can avail for buying a house or a car. You could do a reverse calculation. The maximum loan amount would be down payment into five. Example, Sunny wants to buy a house worth 80 lakhs or 8 million. The minimum down payment which he has to make would be 20% of 8 lakhs, 80 lakhs or 16 lakhs or 1.6 million. If Sunny is not able to cough up the 20%, that means he is over stretching his budget or his financial ability. Put it the reverse way, if Sunny can afford only 1 million or 10 lakhs as down payment, then the maximum loan amount he needs to look out for should be 50 lakhs or 5 million. The next rule on, on loans, this is exclusively on buying a house. All of us love a big house in the heart of the city, but how big the house can be? If you need to decide, 
can you afford that extra bedroom that additional car park or that posh house in this excellent locality this rule will help you home affordability rule the rule says that the maximum budget for a house should be 2.5 times your annual income so if sunny earns 20 lakhs a year the maximum budget for a home he can afford is 20 lakhs into 2.5 or 50 lakhs of 5 million after homes the next popular thing for which we take a loan is about car how big a car or how fast or how which model of car can we go to take a loan the answer car affordability rule or 2410 rule this rule gives you a prudent criteria to consider while purchasing a vehicle on loan the 20 stands for the minimum down payment 4 stands for the maximum tenure of the loan and 10 stands for the total cost of ownership should be less than 10% of annual income the so cost of ownership means loan installments plus fuel plus insurance let us put that in an example so if a car costs 2 million or 20 lakhs the minimum down payment should be 4 lakhs maximum loan tenure should be 4 years and if the annual income is 30 lakhs your yearly transportation cost should be less than 3 lakhs or 0.3 million so this gives you a broad framework about how much loan or what kind of loan you should go while purchasing a car the next step and the last one on loans is a very important one we take variety of loans home loan car loan personal loan how much money should we be allocating for monthly loan installments this is especially important for a salaried individual the answer 36% debt rule as the name suggests it tells you that the maximum monthly debt payments or emi should be 36% of your gross monthly income so i have put a some small example here so if you have a vehicle loan with a emi of 15000 a home loan of 30000 when while you are earning 100000 since you are paying 45000 per month you are exceeding the maximum prudent rule of 36% this gives you quickly you can find out whether you are borrowing more than your ability to repay the last of the thumb rule i want to do in this presentation is a pretty interesting one let us say you hit a jackpot you win a lottery you pick the stock which turn, which multiplied 100 times suddenly you get lots of money what do you do at that point of time the answer one person windfall rule the one person windfall rule prevents you from taking impulse decisions the rule says that in case of a windfall take out one person of the proceeds after taxes and treat yourself you deserve it the remaining 99% set it aside in a bank account leave it untouched for at least 6 months this will help you take prevent you to take impulsive decisions i put that in a small example you win a lottery of 50 million 5 lakhs treat yourself remaining 4.95 keep it in a bank account untouched for 6 months Before I finish the presentation a word of caution thumb rules are not set in stone and 
those can be broken provided we know the rationale or the why behind each of these rules the important factor to remember with thumb rules are they are not based on any scientific research or a formal study they are based on experience and wisdom think of them as a cheat sheet or a financial hack just like a sailor in the sea who uses the lighthouse as a reference point for navigation use these thumb rules as a reference point or a marker to aid your decision making albert einstein put it brilliantly simplicity is the ultimate sophistication thumb rules are just that simple useful and easy to remember as you proceed on this journey of life hope these thumb rules help you choose wisely thank you for watching this presentation if you like this please do share it with your friends and family do subscribe to the channel thank you once again